come today to attend the ceremony of love <coughs> and respect for our beloved Johan. The service we have today is both an opportunity for family and friends to mourn the loss of a loved one, to share tributes, to share memories that endear Johan to each and every one of us. But it's also an opportunity to comfort those who grieve and to receive comfort from a loving God who has promised us that there is a peace that passes understanding and that they can be comforted in the midst of both grief and sorrow. But it's also an opportunity to celebrate a life and give God thanks for a life that was well lived. To acknowledge that through Johann's deep and short faith of a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, that he is now in the presence of his Saviour, and would have heard those words, well done, good and faithful servant, enter into the joy of your Lord. I'd like to begin with a prayer of thanksgiving, but also a prayer for care for family and friends. So Heavenly Father, we come before you today mindful of <coughs> the grief and also the sorrow and the loss of family and friends of Narisha, Corbin and Nikita, of Zani and Anke and his father Paula, brother Benny and his wife Karen, sister Mimi and husband Benny, and Petra and Vessels. Lord, these are immediate family who grieve deeper than perhaps even us as friends. But Lord, we pray that in this moment that that comfort we just spoke about and that peace that passes understanding would become real to each and every one. Lord, we pray for Narisha at this time that you would just give her such an assurance of your love and also such a confidence that God, although this is a separation, it's not an eternal loss. And we're asking, Lord, that there would be such a sense of assurance for all of us as we recognize the hope that there is in faith that Johan is in your care and your love. So comfort us today and we pray that this service would be one that Somehow we weave together in the midst of loss and sorrow, celebration, thanksgiving, and as Johan would have desired, that sense of, uh, as it would be confidence and, and assurance of how much he loved life and how much he loved each one of us. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're going to start the celebration service with some tributes. As we've said today, I guess we really are linking two nations, two homes, two groups of family and friends. And so we'll be beginning with tribute from Johan's daughters, Anki and Zani. Uh, if you have a look to the screen, that's how they'll be joining us for the tribute today. Thank you.
Deeply moving. We're deeply emotional. Mike and Sani are listening in South Africa now. I'd like to say to you as much as I would to Nikita and Corbin that the theme that comes through those words is so often only. I had a few more moments. If only I knew this was the last time. I lost my own mother at the age of 17 when um, she passed away of cancer. And I know that hole in the heart feeling of I wish I'd said, I wish I could have told. The one thing I've come to know, especially now, as a father myself, is that knows. He already knew. We wish we could have filled some last words and some last moments telling him, summing everything up, but I want to tell you, he already knew how much you loved him. I'd like to invite uh, Mr. Ed Overy from uh, Kiwi Rail, the Chief Information Officer there, as we all know, Johan. Uh, was very committed in his work in his professional life because that for him also became a place of relationships and friendships as well. I'd like to invite um, Mr. Overy to come now and bring a tribute. Thank you. Good afternoon. Johan started with Kiwi Rail on the 21st of April 2008 as a service support specialist on the Kiwi Rail IT help desk. His exceptional service there led him to be appointed as project manager as part of the corporate IT team, reporting to the PMI manager in August 2010. He worked as a project manager in the various team shapes that Kiwi Rail had through until today. Johan's work ethic was whether the task or project was large or small. He treated it with the same level of professional, professionalism and diligence. He was always available. Any task that needed doing, Johan's willingness shone through and he'd say, I'll do that and he would. His professionalism as a project manager was recognised not just by his peers and colleagues, but by those in the business at Kiwi Rail. But that's not the Johan that we at Kiwi Rail will remember. The very first day I met Johan, he came to me with a handshake, a greeting, to welcome I knew right then that I'd met somebody really special. Every single day after that, he greeted me and those around him with a handshake, and invariably a farewell on the end of the day. Those that were lucky enough, Mark and Mary and Lisa, that we've met here today, Johan had absolutely unique qualities of compassion, empathy, and trustworthiness. His faith was always in him, and whenever Johan was in the room, a sense of calm prevailed. Johan was a softly spoken man, however, when he did speak, everyone listened. He saw the very best in everyone and made you feel special when you were with him. He was without question. On the, soul the very last time I saw Johan at work was to take him out. Johan leaves behind Kiwi Rail, not a group of colleagues and peers, but a family and friends. I'm honored to also invite Mr. Desmond to repeat to the platform to share and also to present a uh, hymn of my art. Thank you. I guess uh, 
that would be the most appropriate way out of the vision is to say greetings to you, friend. But only one true thing is all that's here today. And that's the hour of this love. You know, I, uh, I was thinking when I was coming up, as you see, I've become notes and I was going to wonder what I was going to say. You know, so it's a chicken now on my own. Oh, my God, my God, people. In the tradition of us, uh, of my ancestors, they farewell our loved ones in this manner. And it goes like this. I live in Ramatina. Farewell, Ramatina. And he put away your toe. And he put away your mouth. You now walk in the spiritual footsteps of the true path. And a pathway that carves to the tip of the North Island, and it's called Spirit Bay. It is there that you depart from the physical world into the spiritual world. There is three spiritual vortex that you enter. The first one is Hawaii Nui, where they gather. Hawaii Road is where they make a quite a long journey. And Hawaii Pamamo, as they see, into the arms of our Creator. Later, I want to put you also in the Hyderabad of the Dr. Michael Richard. And there, as you go into the embracement of our, of our Creator, of our God of Mind, and you go beyond the veil. Hey, later, or Tukuna, Itakarimaina Moko. And your ancestors await you here. Tanginia Kweke, Waikupe, Pele Fenua, you will have the room of her. We can shed our tears to reflect this land with our tears. Your hand will not return to us. In one day, the 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 good word said, one day he used to us. That will make that journey. On a hotel waters. One final piece of Indian family, one of more money, his colleagues and his work friends, that they will be. You read a Koyateni Ewaka and Hokina Mona. He selected this canoe for him to return. A Kiena Kapteni Tuna Waka, Yuma Tiao Tuna. I say this canoe is float on the river of life. The Kakaya Kiki Kiki Tanga, Umahoma Kiki and he will ascend to the pinnacle of the highest mountain. The Kakaya Kiki Tanga, Ufaya, or Taka, Ariki, we who pray. And then we go to that scripture that say, in my father's kingdom, there are many mentions. I go to prepare a place for you. I hope you may know, and I will return. The reader, Mutaka wants to believe. The Kuna Kuku, Mutaka would meet. In the words of prayer, in the words of scripture, that's where it is now. 
My name, of course, is Rupi, and uh, I am a spokesman for TGAM, the Mountain Star Group. And uh, I was asked to, in the, in the remembrance of this Radha TKM particularly wanted to highlight the fact that in the Fata Nur, in the blessing of the office and staying in the street, the Mutuma Makrati and Winter Prayers came to an end. The floor was left open for someone to say a prayer. Johan, in his mother tongue, stood up and said a prayer. And for Maori, that will never ever be forgotten. It stamped a spiritual Mahaharata, a memory stamp on TKM for <coughs> In 2013, I believe, and uh, my learned uh, friend just before me talked about the IT, and he was a project manager, I believe, in the area. And, uh, and everybody, I guess, has an understanding of the, the, the commitment and the passion that he gave to that culture. But what was more insignificant when the labor came in, there was going to be a blessing uh, when it came in. No harm, make sure that it was there. For your theater of the Hono Hono of the Kauka, you know, and it, he wanted to be part of all of the ethnic cultures that was going to be there with that color. And he made sure that he was one of the identities that was here. And then finally, the TK and Mami Star Flickers, which, which we have on Mariah, and you know, you can see a South African coming up, turning up at one of those squeaks, you know, and everybody sort of, hey, you know, this guy must be lost, you know. <laughs> and, uh, but no, he wasn't. He was quite at home to be, to be a participant at that moment's time. In the weekend, I had, I had the privilege of going with a little small group of TK and workers up to do this crematorium um, to pay out of state. And up there, I heard some testimonies and some sharings. It was just absolutely beautiful. People was talking from their heart, and then they were just relating to this Ramachita. They were relating to his um, to his boat, and that's what I called it. I, I called it Kaya. And uh, and and this morning when I was coming, and I, there was a message that I left for that little group on the way. But I want to read another message. It's a message that my grandmother always, always said to me on this final day. And it's your hand saying something to each and every one of us. And I envisage you, each and every one of us standing on this embankment, looking down onto this massive river that goes to the Kore Pakamutuna to infinity. It's a tamata kotang in this lonely figure pushing his canoe out onto this river of infinity. And hopping in and getting these, these oars here and, and paddling out a little way, spinning the boat down and saying to each one of you, thank you for being part of my life. Thank you for making my life what it was on for each one of you, I want to tell you, now I go to the richness of, of life. I go to the ultimate of life. And I've got to make this journey on my own. I go to you 
Okie okay, dokie okay, dokie okay, dokie okay, dokie okay, dokie okay, dokie You have got to return to that general world experience. Be good to one another. Love one another. Love our children. Because this is what the Sanatita was about. I just want to express my condolences and here to the family, to you, the family, the immediate family. Tina, we do it. Tina, we do it. Tina, we do it.
I met Yoga at the Wendy Ridd School many years ago, and it was an amazing meeting. He, he wanted to get to know me, and I certainly wanted to get to know him. He was such a gentle man, so much courage, and so much interest and enthusiasm. He immediately brought out the best in me, and as far as my work with him and everybody else. I personally admired him for his courage, his bravery, and what he had to put up with. The only thing I can say, I know there's a lot of people here who probably would want to say something similar, but all I can say, in tribute, well, I hope Shakespeare forgives me of this, his life was gentle and the elements so mixed in him that nature might stand up and say to all of the world, this was a man. I loved you, Joe. And I stand. And I will miss you, but you'll always be with me as one of these rare individuals that was there for people. And as Shakespeare puts it, his life was gentle, the elements so mixed in him that nature might stand up and say to all of the world, This was a man, and it has been my privilege to meet such an inspiration. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Again, my condolences. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to share briefly today that um, I, I do some work here in this wonderful church with men's ministry, and I'm always spying out the men with the part of heart. And uh, Johan uh, just had a captivating spirit of joy and uh, faith, hope, and love was his God of mine. Um, I, I admired and envied his relationship with Paul. Not so much with Virginia because I, I do a little work with me, but I know that he was so, so proud of me. And um, Corbin, when I was visiting today, uh, only what, a couple of weeks ago, um, you came home from school and um, he came in and he went up to Corbin, um, went up to um, his dad, Corbin's dad, you know. Yeah, um, and he came up behind him and he knelt <clears throat> over him and he kissed his, his, um, his, his head. He didn't just give him a kiss, he stayed there for about five or six, seven seconds. It was a meaningful exchange and I could see the deep, close relationship that these two had. It's called them for the future, and if you need a mate and a brother, someone to talk confidentially with, or have any advice on I've got people for you as well as your family. Um, but the, the, the remaining joy that I have in my heart for the calibre of a Christian, outstanding Christian man who, through suffering, through sickness, never got old, totally praised and loved his Lord. And he's now, he's a full pastor of his head, he's now living in heaven and God in a place. intensely proud of his family and very, very supportive of our school. He was generous, loving and incredibly dignified in the way he chose to live his life through some challenges and we will miss him enormously in our school. But we are very proud to be able to stay connected with the worship and we love you very much.
We are on the southland. Midnight, I was at work there on the farm. And we happened to set some air photos on my account. My daughter, this is my daughter here. She came to me with a baby. She is working on the neighbor farm now. And then she climbed out. And I see her walking. I really. No, there is no trouble that I know. That is the moment where we are safe. The Lord has passed us. And really, it was, it was not easy. But what I, I say thanks for the time that I came to his father. And for me, we are here in the, in the land. He didn't know real much. What I know is, is what he told me or what I have seen here. But I will say this.
other one that has the privilege of knowing you well. And you in my little talk and I was talking about your connection. We were together at times and I can make a base. And you were critical to my life. And just in the conversation, some of what he said to me, his name was Scotty. And I felt very strongly that I needed to look up what exactly that name meant. Because I spent by the church and know that there's huge significance in a name. And I believed there was huge significance when your heart was named and obeyed by his parents. Uh, when you have a computer, some of you are, some of you are working on computers, and you looked up the biblical meaning and someone to go to the biblical meaning. And what struck me and struck out was raised by God. I felt that said in the thing that I feel like he lived a life you could see in his father, his heavenly father was. He was raised by God. Thank you so much to each and everyone who's come and shared. I know each one here holds different memories of Johan, are real precious. And we appreciate the opportunity to be able to take time to give some tributes. But at this time, I'd like to invite Marsha, who's a very close friend of the family, to come and actually present the eulogy in honour of Johan's life. Thank you, Marsha. So that really could fight 
on my face. <laughs> <laughs> I learned very quickly that there was little point in fighting, and you just had to roll with the punches. I loved spending time with the love, and I had an endless source of stupidly dangerous ideas on how to keep us entertained. Whether he pulled the skateboard with the rug behind a motorbike or turned our roof into a water slide, his sense of adventure never let us down. He encouraged us all to jump into rivers, swim in muddy downs of water, and to ride our bikes as fast as we could. He could also do a mean handbrake turn with my mother's car. <laughs> <laughs> I loved fine eggs on my food. He would not have less than three at a time. He preferred the sunny soda and would carefully eat around the yolk to save for the last. He loved the little taste explosion at the end. Another of his favourites was macaroni and cheese. He could make a, ma a very big mac and cheese, and he enjoyed it with a substantial <coughs> amount of mayonnaise spread across the top. <coughs> he loved huge mugs of coffee, and anything less than six spoons of sugar were considered to taste bitter. He was a sporty guy, and always a picture of health and fitness. He acquired springboard colours for tug of war when he was only 17. And he also managed to run the Court of Africa, known to one of the toughest races in South Africa. His spare time was always filled with some other exercise regime, and even playing with his kids was an opportunity to exercise. Uncle Anzani was often used to be introduced with him, much to their delight. He did not enjoy watching movies or any kind of television for that matter. If he wasn't sleeping, he was definitely sleeping with him. This meant that he was the worst partner to play 30 seconds with, as his general knowledge totally sucked. Ask him about his experience in life and with people though, and you would soon realise that he was wise beyond his years. Han loved his children and was so incredibly grateful. <coughs> he admired Uncle for his soft, kind soul, and Zani for her courage and crazy bright spirit. Corbin pushed him to think outside the box and approach the other <coughs> in an extraordinary way. Nikita offered <coughs> structure and order in his strong if they were hurting, he was hurting. If they were happy, he was happy. He would take his life for his children, and in a way, I suppose he did. I never hesitated to help people in need, and he never thought himself superior or better than others. I remember once where I found him in the park close to my house. He was chatting to a homeless man as if he had known each other as, as if they had known each other for years. Another incident involved a car guard from the Democratic Republic of Congo. Han greeted him in his mother tongue and chatted a bit to him and told him about his own experiences in the DRC. This man, up until today, will ask me about my brother, referring to him as the smiling man from the DRC. As good as he was with the people, as terrible was he with keeping time and looking after his stuff. Han lost his zillions of cell phones and was never on time for any ride that I know of. I thought this could have improved once he married you, alas. This did not mean that he was unreliable though. Once he committed to something, he would move the earth to deliver the goods. He might rock up there without his phone, or his keys, or both, but turn up he would. Somebody once said that if you want to know how a man will treat his wife, look at how he treats his mother. I loved our mother. He loved spending time with her and talking to her about all sorts of things. They shared so much and he never told her off or treated her with disrespect. She was his everything and I know that it was the same for the women he loved. Sadly, cancer robbed me of my brother. How I grieve for him. I grieve for the pain and discomfort that he experienced and for every time he might have felt alone or scared or both. I grieve for the bright face that he always wore. I grieve for the positive smile and the way he supported all of us, even though he was the one bearing the illness. I grieve for my children who will not get to see him grow old, and I grieve for his children who will not get to share their children with him. Our hearts are flooded today with sorrow and pain. But Han wanted us to rejoice in the fact that he was now busy with the father. 
And it's not well in South Korea, but celebrate the light of the month of Maka. His light and love touched so many lives, and will continue to do so for every day. You know the one, and you must you always want to be in the camp. Thank you so much. I'd like to invite Jackson and Claire to come forward with me to present an item of a song, a contemporary version of the well known song, Amazing Grace.
Thank you so much. One of the themes that's run so clear through the tributes, through the eulogy, and through our memories of Johan is the fact that this is a man who had faith in his life, but also life in his faith. He also knew how to integrate both his life, his faith, into his family, into his relationships, into his vocation, where he served, but also felt that he had value to add, to help bring values and culture. I've known Johan for a number of years, known him as his pastor, but also as someone who was able to listen and take time with Johan to hear his aspirations and his dreams. And they were always a weaving of all those elements together. His love for his family, his love for you, Narisha, his love for his children, his love for work, his love for the people that he worked with and what they were trying to accomplish, and his tremendous heart of faith. Johan served in this church in so many ways. He worshipped here. He was part of our relational community, but he was also a person who wanted to be a student and enrolled in our school of leadership and ministry, in which times I'd often symbolic here of the boat, the walker, would be sometimes conversations with Johan were like a sailing boat. You didn't know where it was going, but suddenly just catching this breeze, and you're like, how do I get over there? And then back over here, and you tack backwards and forwards with thoughts and conversation, and then and right at the last minute, you'd see what was happening in his thinking and go, I get it. I know what you want, I know what you're seeing, I know what you believe. The question that comes when it's a friend, a loved one who passes away so young, is that question, is it too young? There's sayings, I mean, the good die young, I've found the good die young and old. But the reality is it does seem it was too soon. He was too young. But I'm comforted to know that my Bible tells me that one day in the house of God is better than a thousand outside. And there are many people who have lived twice the length of time as Johan, who have only lived half the life that he did. And when that Bible verse refers to a day in the house of God, it's not talking about rocking up to church. It's talking about being in God's place, in a household, a relationship with God, living a life that's purposeful and intentional and as his creator intended. It's about a house that's made up of relationships and honour as a husband and as a father, a friend and a, a colleague. It's talking about a life that's valued and well lived. And if one day it's worth a thousand outside of those contexts, then he lived a long life and he lived a full life. The truth is, Johann's quality of life is one thing that can give us comfort when we do grieve the brevity and feel shortchanged on his days here. But the reality as well is that everyone's life has a start date and a finish date. I've heard people refer to it, it's only the dash in between that really matters. It's how we live that dash. And I, for one, have to admit when I think of Johann, it does seem too soon. It seems like the dash was too short. But the reality is, if we look at it in the light of eternity, this dash is maybe only a few microns shorter than some here, and maybe a few microns longer than others who have passed even earlier. But he filled that dash with purpose and intention and life and a life well lived. <coughs> One of Johann's favorite Bible verses that Narisha had been given a long time ago used to keep it on her fridge, but I think he pinched it off the fridge one time and stuck it inside his Bible. It's found in Isaiah 57, verse 15. It says, But this is what the high and exalted one, the Lord, says, He who lives forever, whose name is holy. He says, I live in a high and a holy place, but also with the one who is contrite and lowly in spirit, to revive the spirit of the lowly and to revive the heart of the contrite. It's precious to the rich, it's precious to Johan, and I think it sums Johan's life. A man of humility, but there's tremendous strength in humility. There's a verse in the Bible that says, The meek shall inherit the earth, and never confuse meekness with weakness. Even the very Greek word that's used in the Bible of meekness is the word praus. It's something the Romans and the Greeks used to use to describe a wild force that had been brought 
and broken and brought under control, not weakened, but now strength under control. And that's your heart, contrite, meek, humble, but man, what an inner strength. Intentional, purposeful inner strength. The challenge always at a funeral service celebrating a life is that for so many people equate life with finality, the death with finality. They equate a funeral with a sense of it is now finished. For those who hold a faith in God, who believe the miracle of life has more than just a limited shelf of time or lifespan, but actually believe that there's got to be more than simply the natural world. We perhaps approach it differently, but we don't see death as an end. We see it as a separation. We see it as a time apart. The Bible tells us in 1 Thessalonians that we don't mourn as those who have no hope, as we don't grieve as those who are lost, we grieve for those who are simply apart or separated. And our hope, therefore, is eternity. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51 to 57, we're told, Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we shall be changed. In a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For that which is perishable, must put on that which is imperishable. That which is mortal with all immortality. And when that perishable has been clothed with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written shall come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. So where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? For the sting of death is sin and the power of sin is the law, but Thanks be to God who gave us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Johan knew God's forgiveness. It came through a choice to make a relationship with God, not through penance, not through some form of trying to look better or worse than others. It came from simply grace. As we've heard some about, he believed in Jesus Christ and God's grace and forgiveness. And the Bible says that the only sting of death is sin. I've always been amused when I watch some of the biggest and strongest people, be it in a rugby room or be it in a boardroom or a trainee's workshop, when a wasp comes in or a hornet. It'll melt the strongest man and send them running or send them flapping anyway. Yet if the sting of that wasp was removed, all this thing would be is a cute little furry insect. And the Bible says of death, that's just what you like. You're fearful of many, but you're only fearful if there's a sting. You're only fearful if there's a consequence of death, a judgment or a loss of relationship or a, a loss of heaven, a loss of knowledge of God. The truth is, for Johan, he had a relationship with God, and he hasn't feared death. I've had conversations with him many times, even up to a few weeks ago. And he had no fear of death. He had a fear of separation. He had a grief of loss, but he knew that God was in his life and he was in his. I know Johan would have wanted me today to not just focus on him, but on us. And so I just want to ask us one simple question, because what I find about a funeral is it's an opportunity for us to stop at a good way sign, which is for somebody else to become a stop sign. It's an opportunity for us, if we took the analogy of somebody on a long bush walk, maybe through the Waitakere Ranges, walking through dense bush and not preoccupied by the beauty and the challenge of the vegetation or the path in front of them, but every so often on those long bush walks, there's a little sidetrack. And that sidetrack normally leads to a little outlook, a viewing platform where you sometimes stop and stand and look off in the distance to perhaps that coast or the beach, which is your ultimate destination. Maybe now it's tramping away, maybe a couple of kilometers walk, but you just get these little glimpses that remind you of where you're going. Then you come back down the path and you get back on that hike, and the next thing you know what you're thinking about is where your feet go and the rock in front of you and the plants around you or perhaps the people with you. It's like you've forgotten that. And then every so often you come to another one of those lookouts, those scenic lookouts. That's how I often approach a funeral. 
I think every one of us here gets so busy with the path of life, the trample of life, the people we're with, the activities of our day, all things that are valuable and purposeful and intentional. But every so often, something like today happens, where a loved one's stop sign becomes our good way sign. A pause in the journey where we actually get a glimpse of what really is all of our ultimate destinations. And I think it's an opportunities like this that we need to give the value that that moment's due and ask ourselves that same question. When I, when I too reach that destination, will I be ready? Will I be prepared? And will I have used the path of life that took me to that place to make sure I took everything out of that path and made the journey what it was intended to be? In Johan's words, I many of you would have heard him say it many times, he would simply say to you, man, I just encourage you to get to know God. Get to a relationship with him. I know in my conversations with Johan, he talked about his workmates, he talked about his friends and family. And he would always say, Martin, I just want people to know just how easy it is to know and love God, to receive his forgiveness, and to know God as a heavenly Father. So my prayer for us all today is perhaps as we do pause at this lookout, where it's our giveaway sign, but it's Johann stop sign, I'd love to invite you to consider for any here today that for whatever reason you feel distant from God, maybe because you've never ever received Christ's forgiveness or invited God into your heart or into your life. Johann would say the same to you that I would say to you as a pastor. There's no hoops to jump through. There's no trying to measure yourself against him or anyone else. The Bible makes it almost obscenely simple. It simply says this, to as many as receive Christ, he gives them the privilege of being the sons and daughters of God. And so my prayer is we honor Johan, as we remember him, as we love him, as we think about the value of his life, is to say, yes, we feel grieved from the short the brevity of his life. But we also have to overlay that with the real reality and the knowledge that each one of us can say it was a life so well lived. Johan would have had his regrets as much as each and every one of us, but what he learned was not to build a life on regrets, but to actually build a quality life, including the lessons that some of those regrets might have brought us. He knew how to filter in life out of pretty much every person he met best and things are valued. And I pray that we will do the same today in our honour of him. To see his exemplar life and his attitude of faith and family and work and say, Johan, thank you for pointing the way in the midst of the bush, in the midst of the path. Thank you for even today, Johan, giving us an opportunity to see a much bigger picture. I want to pray a prayer of thanks for Johan's life and then Johan's brother Benny is going to come and thank everyone here on the family's behalf. We'll give you a few simple little announcements and then we'll conclude the service with a committal. But let's pray to give thanks to Johan. Father, we thank you for our friend Johan. Father, son, brother, colleague. Lord, we love him. We pray that we will indeed take from today, as we have from all that time with him, so many encouragements and inspirations and lessons, the laughter, the fun, the commitment to relationship, even with people he hardly knew, the handshake walking in each day and the handshake leaving. The handshake not of formality, but one of saying, you matter, people matter. And I pray, God, that as we do again pray for his precious family, for his loved ones, both here and in South Africa. That God, your comfort, your peace, and your goodness would indeed follow us all the days of our life. Bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Yes, so please excuse me if I missed anybody.
that it was on the onset of the was like uh, God the people knew it to this book which you're reviewing. So yeah, so thank you for the for the last service sheet and keeping up with us and our lives to you. And then last bit but not least, with the schools that look um, that supported um the New Zealand organ Peter. And I think the same for um Dani and Punk in South Africa. I think in, in in any circumstances we 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 want all for your dear friends to start to give to give you that comfort and support. Parents can, can help and assist where you can. That is background for school comes from schools and friends. But I want to thank schools and, and maybe expand the group and maybe anybody that needs a lot to join them. I mean, losing a mom wasn't, wasn't easy and I was really strong. I mean, I'm seeing myself as an adult and, and my mom was like, it was really difficult. So imagine the kind of age and how it is with you guys. So I just want to say that any support that you guys want and any support that you guys need, look around and just be here. I'm sure everybody will do their best to get you. Thank you. So again, please excuse me if I have missed anybody, but please if I want to say just thank you very much. In the foyer at the end of the service, there's a album uh, that Johan received from the students, which family would be really appreciative if you take the time to sign up and make a few comments and thoughts there as well. Uh, the close family will follow the casket to create the crematorium ceremony straight after the service. And at the end of the service, there will be some coffee and tea available uh, just outside here as you read to the right. Um, Perhaps whilst you're out there, you can debate what colour jersey Mel Harm would have worn on Sunday morning. If there was another form of streaming from Europe to do with South Africa, I think I know already which side you would have been supporting. But you can remind me when I get out there. I'd like to ask you to stand as we close the service with the committal and then with the prayer of benediction on the basic. Thank you all so much for being here. And of course, I'd always like to remind you to support your family. Is needed even more beyond today. I know what this room will play a role in. In sure and certain hope of the resurrection unto eternal life, through our Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to Almighty God our brother Johann, and we commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, and dust to dust, knowing that together with all those who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on that last and final day. Amen. No one to heaven who is able to keep you from falling, to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy. For the only God and Savior be glory, majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord before all ages, now and forevermore. Amen. Please remain standing. Thank you. 